Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video on the channel today. Today, we got another tier list video. Bread and butter, it's easy, it's quick, you guys seem to like it. Um, we got quarterbacks today. Quarterbacks, I think, are the most fun position to rank because, truthfully, I think the opinions, there's such a, a wide variety of opinions, and a lot of people's opinions are just wrong. So I'm here to correct your guys' opinions. But as per usual, if you guys have been enjoying the videos, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. We're on the road to 1,000, and we're close. Kind of, relatively. But let's get right into the tier list. As you can see on the left column, we have the tiers. Um, we have Patrick Mahomes. Spoiler. We have absolute studs, franchise QBs, decent, mid, and then a hot ass. Let's start with Aiden O'Connell, uh, who unfortunately does land in the hot ass category. I don't think he's very good at all. You know, he's a fourth rounder out of Purdue last year and did not play particularly well for the um, – for the Raiders last year. I think that he is, you know, an absolute statue in the pocket. I don't think he has any playmaking ability. His arm's not very special. His accuracy isn't overly, you know, special either. Um, I, I don't think Aiden O'Connell's very good. Although, if we're ranking mustaches, he would definitely be in the Patrick Mahomes tier of quarterback mustaches. Now let's go to Anthony Richardson. I think Anthony Richardson is a franchise quarterback. Um, he's just got every single tool that you want from a franchise quarterback. Now, sure, is he raw? Is he, you know, a bit rough around the edges? Absolutely. But when you really look at it, I think Anthony Richardson has the, the structure in place with Shane Steichen, with Michael Pittman. They drafted Adonai Mitchell um, to be really, really successful in this league. I think he's going to get coached up. I think that he is going to be a franchise quarterback. You guys know I like Anthony Richardson. That's really no surprise. Uh, Aaron Rodgers at this point, it's really hard to rank Aaron Rodgers just because we haven't seen Aaron Rodgers for a few seasons now. Obviously, last year he tore his Achilles. The year before that, he wasn't particularly amazing. Um you just never know with Aaron Rodgers uh, these last couple of years. It's really hard to get a read on him. I'm still going to put him in franchise quarterback, but he's a guy that I really – that's kind of a previous ranking that really had I, – I just, I just don't know how to rank him right now because I don't know how effective he's going to be off the Achilles and everything like that, and I don't know. But obviously he has earned the benefit of the doubt throughout the course of his career. Baker Mayfield does belong in decent. Now, he had a really good year last year. Do I think it was the kind of a fluke? Yes. I think maybe there will be some regression with uh, the departure of Dave Canales. But Baker Mayfield is a decent quarterback in the NFL. Like, you don't feel great if Baker Mayfield's your quarterback. You don't feel probably like you can win a Super Bowl. But, um, you know, he showed it in Cleveland. He showed it a little bit in Los Angeles. And he showed it last year with the Buccaneers. He is capable of being a solid NFL quarterback. Uh, I think maybe that's his ceiling at this point in his career is, you know, a, a – top 18 quarterback in the NFL. Um, but that can get it done sometimes. You know, you can win playoff games, game with Baker Mayfield. Um, that's what I'll say. I think Bo Nix is mid, although I'm not going to spend too much time talking about him. He is a rookie. I'm not going to really rank the rookies, you know, unless I feel very strongly about them. I don't think Bo Nix is going to be that good. But in fairness, I haven't seen him. So this ranking is kind of an NA. I don't have a rookie category. So he just kind of lands in mid. Brock Purdy. I think Brock Purdy is a franchise quarterback, and at this point I would put him above Aaron Rodgers. Um, listen, again, putting him above Aaron Rodgers might sound asinine, and it kind of is, but again, we don't know what Aaron Rodgers is like right now, uh, whereas we've seen Brock Purdy now. I understand the gripes about Brock Purdy. You know, he's not the best athlete. He doesn't have the biggest arm. Um, he, you know, does have a fantastic supporting cast with Kyle Shanahan and Ayuk and McCaffrey and Debo and Kittle. I get it. I get it. But one thing you got to consider is that Brandon, uh, Brandon, uh, Brock Purdy's job is not to play Superman. He's not out there side-arming it, winging it, keeping plays alive for 40 seconds. No. His job is to play point guard. It's to distribute the ball. It's to get it out on time with accuracy, and that's what he does. Brock Purdy is a good decision maker. Brock Purdy gets the ball out quickly. Brock Purdy has good timing. You know, do I want to see maybe a stronger arm? Do I maybe want to see, you know, a little bit better athletically? Maybe. But I can't knock Brock Purdy for too much because he plays the way that Kyle Shanahan wants him to play. Um, additionally, you know, is he a total just, you know, piss down his pants type of guy in the playoffs? No. I don't think he necessarily elevates his level of play in the playoffs. Um, I don't think that he's like, oh, uh oh, like Brock Purdy has the ball with two minutes left. I don't think he's that type of guy, but he definitely doesn't shit his pants in the playoffs. Um, again, that's something, you know, Jimmy really fell victim to a lot where he would just kind of poop, poop in his pants in big spots. And you're like, dude, what, what the fuck are you doing? Uh, whereas with Brock Purdy, you never really see him shit his pants. Um, yeah. 
Bryce Young, you know, I'm not giving up on Bryce Young yet. Last year was rough. Last year was really rough. I, I'll do. I will blame the Panthers' structure around him a lot for that, though. I mean, he just he really had nothing to work with. He had no fucking shot, no shot. Was he great? No. But again, first year rookie quarterback. He is smaller in stature, was with which is a concern. Um, his arm isn't super big, but I do think that he's very twitchy. I do like his release. You know, I liked it in college more than I think I liked it last year. Um, and at Alabama, he was fairly accurate. You know, throwing down the field. And, you know, let's see when he has actual professional football players around him. Let's see what he's able to do. Um, I am going to break my own rule. I'm going to put Caleb Williams in franchise quarterback category. Now, I understand he's a rookie. I understand I have never seen him play professionally. I get that. When you look at Caleb Williams, though, there's not a lot I can say that hasn't already been said. Um, He's just uber talented, considered by many to be one of the best prospects at the quarterback position in several years um he's going into a really good situation in chicago that i think probably is the best number one overall pick situation a quarterback has ever gone into the every single domino is lining up for kayla williams to be very very good in this league and if he isn't that's a disappointment but if you had to you know make a bet right now um i think you would absolutely say that kayla williams is going to be a franchise quarterback speaking of franchise quarterbacks though an absolute stud is C.J. Stroud. Um, you know, sorry, sorry, Panthers fans, you got me talking shit about Bryce Young, immediately followed by me praising C.J. Stroud. C.J. Stroud was really, really, really good for the Texans last year. Um, one of the best rookie seasons that I think we've seen in quite some time. Um, he truthfully, you know, as the year went on, you just felt him getting more confident. Um, he was understanding the concepts better. He was getting the ball out quicker. He was taking more chances down the field. His chemistry grew with Nico Collins and Tank Dell. Um, C.J. Stroud was really good last year, and I think another thing about C.J. Stroud is take away the, maybe the Baltimore Ravens game where I don't think they really had a chance. In the big games, in the big situations, he really elevated himself. He threw that, um, he had that amazing drive against the Buccaneers, ended in that game-winning touchdown, um, the game against the Colts, the win and get in. He was excellent against the Browns the first round of the playoffs. I mean, this is a, a dude. I mean, he's, he's a freaking dude. So I think you really, really feel good if you have C.J. Stroud as your starting quarterback. Dak Prescott, I will put in franchise quarterback. Now, I think Dak Prescott <clears throat> is kind of like maybe the textbook definition of franchise quarterback, and I mean that in a negative and positive way. In a negative way, maybe a franchise quarterback, he's never able to, to go into that second gear. He's never able to really be Superman in the big spots. He's never able to, to will you to go to the Super Bowl or to you know win the huge games. But I mean a franchise quarterback in the sense that you don't really need to upgrade when you have Dak Prescott as your quarterback. You feel good about Dak Prescott being your quarterback. Um, he does a lot of things really well, puts up really good numbers in the regular season. Um, and, you know, Cowboys fans, I think, are blessed to have Dak Prescott for as many years as they've had him. Now, again, is he probably going to ever win a Super Bowl? Probably not. Is he a guy that I, you know, am, am scared shitless of if he has the ball going against my favorite team two minutes left? Maybe not. Um he does kind of poop himself in, in big games, big moments. You know, he pooped himself in the Packers game, that's for sure. Um, but, yeah, I think I think Dak Prescott's a franchise quarterback. I think that that's probably right where he sits. Daniel Jones, though, I will say, I think is incredibly mid. Um, I've never – I never bought into the Daniel Jones hype. Like, I just, I just don't see it with him. Um, I just – you know, 2022, people were trying to tell me that Daniel Jones was the next, you know, coming of Eli Manning. I don't know what you were talking about. I don't know what football you watched that year, but it wasn't what happened in New York. Um, yeah, Daniel Jones, like, he, you know, his decision-making can get erratic. His his mechanics can be all over the place. He doesn't have a uh, super strong arm. He's a good athlete, not a great athlete by any means when he's not tripping over his own feet. Um, I just don't think Daniel Jones is a guy that can elevate a piss-poor situation. And for, fortunately, I think that's what he's in right now in New York, a piss-poor situation um, that he won't be able to elevate. Um Let's talk now about Derek Carr. I think Derek Carr is incredibly mid. I'm going to put him above Bo Nix just to give him the benefit of the doubt. I'm also going to put Bryce Young above Bo Nix. Sorry, Bo Nix. Derek Carr, again, he's just so – if I had to describe Derek Carr in one word, it would be vanilla. It's like you could do worse at quarterback, but, like, you're not going to do shit with Derek Carr. I mean, I – I don't really know how to quantify why I don't like Derek Carr as a quarterback. He's he's quite literally like the textbook definition of mid. Just, you know, he had some good years in 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 the Raiders, on the Raiders, excuse me. 
I don't know. I mean, it just there's it's really hard to quantify right now why I don't like Derek Carr. He just doesn't do anything particularly well. He's never won a playoff game. Um, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I just don't like Derek Carr. Sorry. Um, let's talk about Deshaun Watson, who is hot ass. Um, listen, I am not one to give him the benefit of the doubt to think that he can be Houston Deshaun Watson. I think those days are, are long gone. I, I don't think that Deshaun Watson will ever be what he was like in Houston. I think part of that is maybe some karma. Um, but that's a conversation for a different day. But he was, you know, really, really bad in the, what, like 15 games we've seen him in a Cleveland Browns uniform. Uh, he hasn't played real football in like four years. It's it's interesting. It's definitely an interesting spot. Um, until further notice, I think he belongs in the ass category. For Drake May, I'm going to have to put him in decent. Again, don't have an opinion on Drake May yet. Hasn't played a professional game. I think he's going to be good. But as of right now, I can't rank him too high. I think he's kind of raw. Geno Smith. Um, ooh, Geno Smith's hard to rank. Hard for a couple of reasons. A, I'm a Seahawks fan. Duh. B, um, the opinions on Geno Smith can be so out of pocket both ways. Um, do I think Geno's his top 10 quarterback? No. Do I think Geno is a bottom 10 quarterback? Absolutely not. I think Geno is pretty comfortably like the 13th to 14th best quarterback in the NFL. He's slightly above average. Um, there's a lot of people hating on Geno Smith. I will say the Seahawks offensive line last year was terrible. They also struggled to run the ball. Their offensive line was particularly bad on third down. Um, and Geno's been solid. He was solid last year. People like to think that Geno Smith was ass last year. Again, I don't know what football you were watching. Geno Smith was pretty good last year. Wasn't as good as what he was in 2022. Um, but, you know, you have a good season followed up by a pretty good season. I would say that Geno probably deserves the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to put him in decent. I'm going to put him above ba- oh. I'm gonna put him above Baker Mayfield. Because I don't think he's quite a franchise quarterback. You do have a lot of Seahawks fans bitching that, uh, that we needed to, you know, draft a quarterback. We need to draft Michael Penix, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to go that far again. But I will say that I think uh, I think Geno's pretty good. Um, let's go to Jalen Hurts, who I think is a franchise quarterback. Now, Jalen is kind of the, the anti-Dak Prescott in the sense that Jalen has had some really good playoff games. He was legitimately freaking awesome in the Super Bowl, minus the fumble, which is a big bud. But minus the one fumble, he was really, really good in the Super Bowl. And, you know, you look at some of his other games, he's been good in big spots. Um, last year was kind of a funky year, though, for the whole Eagles offense. They never kind of found their rhythm. They never kind of found their groove. Jalen Hurts was not the MVP caliber player he was in 2022, um, which I actually think if he doesn't get hurt against Chicago, he probably uh, wins the MVP in 2022. But um, kind of good. I mean, I think that Jalen Hurts is a franchise quarterback. He's definitely paid like a franchise quarterback. I think if you're an Eagles fan, you feel really good having Jalen Hurts as your quarterback. And I think that with a offensive coordinator change this past offseason, the Eagles are bound for some positive regression. Um, that's what I think. That's what I think. All right, let's go to Jared Goff. Jared Goff, I'll put right ahead of Geno Smith. I mean, I'm talking about like six-inch difference ahead of Geno Smith. Um, Jared Goff, to me, here's, the th- here's what I'll say, and I'll, I'll put this as politely as possible. If the Seahawks had Jared Goff, and the Lions had Geno Smith. I don't think anybody would be debating that Geno Smith is better. But situations as they are, Jared Goff probably inches out Geno by this much. Um, is that fair? Maybe not. But I do think that um, Jared Goff has put up some really solid numbers last year. He was legitimately really good against the 49ers in the NFC Championship game. He was good against uh, the Buccaneers the week before. Jared Goff, again, is he you know maybe – an aggressive game manager? Is he a guy that benefits from Ben Johnson and Jameer Gibbs? Maybe, um, but I can't take him away from him. Now, should he be paid like the second best quarterback in the NFL? Hell to the fuck no, but um, good for him, got his bag, and uh, and yeah, I think Jared Goff, he's pretty good. He, he is pretty good. I was I was a big Jared Goff hater probably until like a year, year and a half ago, but he's, he's solid. Uh, Jaden Daniels, I'm going to put him right behind Drake May. Uh, that's not a potential, that's not a, you know, perfect order. I don't know how to rank him. I'm not going to rank him. He hasn't played a snap yet. Uh, JJ McCarthy, I'm putting that. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'll put him in mid right behind Bob Nix. I don't think he'll be as good as Drake May and Jaden Daniels, um, but I don't know. Haven't seen him play, so i got to put him there. Joe Burrow, though, was an absolute stud. I, I will be honest. I'm going to put him above CJ Stroud. Um, when Joe Burrow's healthy, the Bengals team, they're going to be Super Bowl contenders every single year when he's healthy. Um, he's really accurate. He's a really good decision maker. He brings like that swagger, that, that aura uh, to the Bengals. Um, they're legitimately just a different team. I know Jake Browning come, 
Jake Browning come in came in last year and did pretty good, um, but it's not it wasn't the same as what Joe Burrow could have did could have done. Wow, I'm, can you tell I'm tired? <laughs> could have done. Um, he's a, he's a really good player. He's gone toe to toe with Mahomes and Josh Allen. He's beat both those guys in the playoffs and. Legitimately, if you want to make it to the Super Bowl in the AFC, you're gonna to have to go through Mahomes. You're gonna to have to go. Th- you have to go through Allen and Mahomes, um, and he's done that. So, congrats to Joe Burrow. I think Jordan Love is a franchise quarterback. I'm gonna put him right behind Jalen Hurts, um, right above Anthony Richardson. He's more proven, I think, than these guys. Uh, you know, and I go ahead and put Brock Purdy ahead of Anthony Richardson too. I don't want my bias to get in the way here. Um, Jordan Love had a really good year last year. After you know being sidelined for the first three years of his career. He was kind of raw coming out of Utah State. Um, obviously got the chance to start and was, was, was legitimately awesome. I don't think the Packers necessarily had Pro Bowl caliber receivers or tight ends or offensive linemen, and he made it work. He made it look good. He ran Matt LaFleur's offense really, really well. I think post probably Thanksgiving uh, of this past year, you know, he was a different quarterback. He was really good, and I think he's about to go sign a $50 million extension now. He probably does have a uh, little Aaron Rodgers, a little Brett Favre in him, more so Brett Favre, where he can be a little loosey-goosey and, and you know, throw the ball around the yard. And, and sometimes against NFL defenses, that does not work. Uh, notice the end of the NFC divisional round. But if as long as he keeps his turnovers relatively low, which he did last year, he can still make those big throws. He can keep extending plays. Um, unfortunately, it looks like Green Bay got another franchise quarterback. Um, let's talk about some really good quarterbacks, though. Josh Allen is an absolute stud. I don't need to tell you this. Uh, he is Superman. He can do everything. He can just take over games. He can be a one-man army. Uh, he's so big and strong and sexy. Sorry, what did I say? Um, but no, I mean, huge arm, great athlete, really accurate, can buy time. Uh, I would argue probably the best or the second best playmaker in the NFL at the quarterback position. And uh, there's not a whole lot you're going to hear me say about Josh Allen other than the fact that sometimes when he's in Superman mode, he can't turn it off. Turns the ball over a little too much, but you know, for all the positive plays he makes, I will I will take a few extra interceptions here or there for sure. Uh, Justin Herbert, I think, is right above C.J. Stroud as one of the really, really, really good quarterbacks in this league. Um, you know, people the knock on him has been that the Chargers haven't won any big games, they haven't won a playoff game with him, and I understand. I think that people kind of uh, underestimate how how dysfunctional the Chargers have been under Brandon Staley, under Anthony Lynn. Hopefully, Jim Harbaugh is going to come in bring that structure, um, make them a cohesive unit. And so Justin Herbert's going to be able to have success in the playoffs. I really do think he will. Kirk Cousins, again, is kind of in that, like, Geno Smith, Jared Goff stratosphere where I think they're really good. I don't think that they're necessarily franchise quarterbacks, but I think that they are solid quarterbacks that you you don't – you shouldn't feel bad about having as your number one starter. Kyler Murray, um, this one's hard to rank too. Because I'm just going to go through it. There are some injury concerns with Kyler Murray. There are some, I guess, mentality concerns, you know, with the leadership thing. The whole thing with Larry Fitzgerald just really kind of fucked me up for a while. Hasn't won big games. Now, again, you could say Cliff Kingsbury. You can say, you know, whoever. I get it. But I don't know. I, uh, I'm i not super sold on Kyler Murray being a franchise quarterback. I think he's like a – almost like a Justin Fields. He's like a souped-up Justin Fields almost. You know, I'll put him in decent. I'll put him ahead of – I'll put him right below Goof, right above Geno. I think that's probably fair. Um, absolute studs, you don't need me to tell you that Lamar Jackson, the two-time MVP, number one overall seed in the AFC last year, is a stud. He is. Um, he's lost – I want to actually take this time to talk about it. He's lost a lot of weight, and I'm actually curious – if that'll make him more or less dangerous, because obviously, like, when you're thinner, you're going to be faster, quicker, whatever. But I do wonder if that'll lead to more injuries. Maybe he'll be a little bit more frail. Um, I don't know. I'm not spe- – I'm not – I don't want to speculate injuries, but I'm just saying I think maybe – maybe I could hurt him. Maybe. Um, let's talk now about Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford, I think, is a franchise quarterback, I think, pretty easily. He's – yeah, probably right there I would put him. Um, you know what, and I'm going to read, no, I'm going to put him above Dak because Matthew Stafford is that guy. Um, Matthew Stafford, <sighs> how do I say Matthew Stafford? He's he's just so good, man. He he really is. There's throws that he makes that just shouldn't be possible. Um, you know, we're seeing that now with actually a functional organization, Matthew Stafford has the ability to be really good. Him and Sean McVay together is just not fair. The, you know, concern at this point is injuries. 
Um, he's not as mobile, I think, as he once was. His playmaking probably isn't as good. But his arm is, is as good as they're going to come in the NFL. Um, I think he gets – you know, really in that good zone of reading defenses and being able to dissect and, and you know, looking at the zones and everything like that. Matthew Stafford's a really good quarterback. And, again, his age and his injury are a concern. But if he's on the field, I mean, you're getting a really, really good quarterback. He's also tough as fuck. I mean, I could probably shoot this guy in the leg with a shotgun and he'd still stay in the game and throw touchdown passes. That's how tough he is. Um, shocker, what what tier is Patrick Mahomes going to – yeah, he's going to the Patrick Mahomes tier. Uh, three-time champ. Two-time MVP, best player on planet Earth. I don't need to elaborate. Sorry, guys. Russell Wilson, uh, at this point, Russell Wilson is kind of mid. I will be honest with you. I, I'll put him above Daniel Jones. Last year in Denver was not good. The year before that was even worse. Um, so I guess he's trending in the right direction. No, but the trade, to, the trade, not the trade, the signing for him going to Pittsburgh, I think is going to be good for him to kind of, you know, just get a reset because Denver just did not work out for him at all. I still think he's got a... Solid quarterback in there somewhere, um, but I haven't seen him for a couple of years, so he's mid right now. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, yeah, Trevor Lawrence is guys. Trevor Lawrence is really good. Trevor Lawrence is really good. I, I don't want to hear the comments. Oh, the Jaguars, they suck last year. Blah, 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 blah. It was not Trevor Lawrence's fault. Trevor Lawrence is really, really good. He's a top ten quarterback in the NFL. Period. Wait, let me make sure. Let me, let me make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Yeah, he's a top ten quarterback in the NFL. Period. Um, I mean, there's a reason he was the number one overall pick. Consensus, number one overall pick, mind you. Uh, his pocket presence is elite. I think his arm is really, really good. Now, he did make some risky decisions last year, I think. But I think part of that was just trying to get some going, trying to get some big plays. Calvin Ridley did him no favors last year. He was not good. They had no running game. Their interior offensive line was a mess. Not a lot going for the Jaguars' offense last year, but they still have Trevor Lawrence, so I think they're, they're pretty set. Um, Tua is a guy that... <sighs> I'm putting him behind Geno Smith. I don't give a fuck. Tua, I love Tua. But Tua to me is kind of a... Uh, he's kind of a Mike McDaniel merchant. Tyreek Hill merchant. Maybe. Possibly. Kind of. Yeah. Um, Tua to me does not have a lot of elite traits. His arm, not very good. His his athletic, athleticism, not very good. His downfield touch is not very good. But... He does do a few things well that I think coincide with the Dolphins, the way they want to run offense. He does have a quick release. He does get the ball quick. He is accurate, I think, in the short and intermediate areas of the field. Um, his mechanics, you know, when he's unpressured are really good. I just don't think that Tua, again, not a guy that can go Superman mode, not a guy that you are, you know, scared of having the ball, not, of, not a guy that's going to be able to make and extend plays. That's kind of just not Tua's game. And then in Will Levis, I will put him in mid as well. He was slightly better than Bryce Young last year. I don't have an opinion. He barely played. Um, that's my quarterback tier list. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I'm interested to hear what your opinions are and what your rankings are for these quarterbacks. Until next time, I will see you guys. Peace out.